Welcome, Bobby, to Metalidium Pages. It's a great pleasure to talk with you about Signs of the Swarm, this new album, Amons of the Low and Empty, and more chill related to the metal world. So we have, we will ask him by I don't know, come on question. How was the band been during these two last years? Because your first album, Absol, was released two years ago. Now we have a new album. Yeah, yeah. So we spent a lot of time on the road uh, from our last album, Absolvir. Uh, up to recording this album, um, we were all, we were on tour for almost a year straight from the time that record came out until uh, last September, and then we went into the studio to record this record in late October, early November. So it was pretty much album absolutely came out tour 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 straight into making a new record, and then now we're working on putting it out. So it's been good, but it's it's been a crazy year. It's very busy that the year and a half or so in between. The two records so but i'm ready to get this one out and uh do it all over again <laughs> okay nice nice so uh, well this new album has uh, a little news about this new amongst the laws of empty because this new album is your enter uh, is, is your release by uh, by century media century media records a big label around the world you how was the transitions to pass to unique leader to the century media records because this Unique Leaders is not a big as I as Century Me I see it, but it's, it's a great label too. Yeah. So uh firstly I'm very grateful for Unique Leader Records and Jamie and especially Eric Lindmark, who founded the label. And um he was Eric was like the first person to believe in our band uh when we were before you know our first record came out and it was very DIY, very rough. We didn't know what we were doing. Uh, and we signed into a contract at the time uh, for three records. And like, respectfully, it wasn't the greatest contract, but they believed in us enough to help us get our band, you know, moving. And so, yeah, Unique, Unique was great um, for a lot of reasons. But like you said, they're definitely a smaller label. Um, I, and we kind of needed that outreach. Like we got to the point where uh, we had we were talking about it for a very long time, pretty much all of our last record cycle going into that, like, well, you know, we want to do our own. Do we want to go independent? Do we want to resign? Do we want to reach out? So, you know, we tested the waters. We got offers from from people. We met people and we we met um, some people from different labels, but mostly we kept bumping into the people from Century, which is like Mike Gitter and Sonia. And, um, they just really treated us well and treated us like family and friends. And I mean, not to say Unique didn't. Like Jamie was a very good friend of ours. I appreciate him a lot. But he's uh, he's on the he's across the pond. He's in the UK, and that can make things a little more difficult for a working relationship. Um, whereas here, like we, we're bumping into these people all the time, they're actively helping us, actively coming to our shows, trying to make that connection. And they just really wanted us, and they gave us a great offer. And we really like the relationship we have with them. And yeah, I mean, it's, it's obviously it's it's really cool to have that greater audience through them and have a little bit more of like a, a I don't know more more of like a, a business side backing you what you're doing you know it, it feel it makes you feel a little more confident with what you're doing also they believe in us a lot and they kind of let us do what we want to do for the most part which is cool usually you know there's, there's a little bit you have your hand here or there um, unique was really great about not uh, really influencing us too much and one way or the other it's pretty much like you have your music you can do whatever you want with it really cool you know within the realms of <laughs> what's acceptable but um it's, it's pretty much the same thing with century you know they don't really make us change anything or anything like that it's they're pretty open to what we're doing and they like the band which is cool so i appreciate them a lot for that mm -hmm. nice nice well, one aspect that you said is when you talk, talking about unique leader unique leader was founded in 1999 at the end of the night as i remember by eric Liedman. at that time eric Liedman, our well, i remember where we release a uh, just brutal death metal, technical death metal, since some kind of class. Since yeah. 2008, 2009, at the end of the movement of the brutal death metal, I remember very well this aspect. Um, he he signed a lot of death core bands, sign of warm, a lot of more technical bands, a lot of death core bands. Well, because that death core era is, I, I, I remember the death core era for Carnifex, Suicide Silence, and, and more, more, and more bands, more. Um, are just four, five, six, but uh, the death currency has continued growing to 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 the from there to now. 
And one aspect that I'm detailed is that the mostly uh, mostly three bands from yeah from from unique leaders now are with Century Media. It's a curious team because Mental Cruelty, Sign of the Swarm, uh, I I I don't know, I I can't remember the name from the uh, Netherlands band. Distant, but, huh? Dist distant. Yeah, they, distant, they also, yeah. yeah. The three yeah. bands was first in in the oh well, were first in the in new leaders and now Century Media. Can we say that this new deathcore movement around the world is now catchy for the big labels? Because I think we are in a second wave of the deathcore scene. Yeah, um, that's a great, that's honestly a great point. Uh, no one's really brought that up to me. So that's cool. Um, yeah, I mean, like, uh, yeah, Eric, uh, unique leader in the Deeds of Flesh it was very much uh, death metal, brutal death metal. Um, and then, yeah, I think they signed some some more, like, I think they had like Rings of Saturn and Fallujah and, um, I don't really know all of us, but they had some some more technical deathcore, death, mm. you know, progressive kind of of metal. And then, um, you know, it's funny. Yeah, like when we saw, when we announced that we signed the label, a lot of people that were fans of the label because like they're very niche kind of like a specific genre label. Mm -hmm. A lot of people kind of hated on us for it, but I think they kind of came around and we started doing kind of well. And yeah, then they had a bunch of band deathcore bands like Volvadinia, and I do think that like. In a way, uh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, Unique was a little bit ahead of the curve with signing deathcore bands. Like Eric was interested in us, and then like Volvadinia as well. I don't, I'm not sure if Eric signed them or Jamie signed them or who, but like you know, uh, distant was uh, probably Jamie. But um, and then yeah, I mean now obviously with the the insane success of a lot of deathcore bands. I mean there was the whole MySpace wave, and then there was the a new wave and now it's kind of coming again like with this ultra technical shit like Lorna Shore and and you know we've kind of been trailing them for a very long time they're friends of ours and so it's cool you know they get they get picked up by this more major label they put on this great record it it helps to prove to you know these bigger labels and obviously I mean even parent companies of those labels that are responsible for where your support comes from um, to see that it's worth investing and in giving these kind of bands the time of the day because you will get the response back from fans, uh, whether it's money or just support or views or whatever, you know, people at shows. Like, I think that is laying the groundwork for bands like us and Distant and, you know, the, the up and coming more deathcore bands like that. Um, yeah, I think it, they're definitely seeing, we are definitely seeing a bit of a resurgence. I mean, even since COVID is crazy. Just in the last few years, there's a lot more people coming to shows and stuff. So, yeah, it's definitely coming back. And I think the labels are seeing it, you know. I mean, like, Nuclear Blast always had some great deathcore bands. Century had some great, some some good deathcore bands, but it wasn't like it is. I think they've signed so many up, great up-and-coming bands. And you know what's funny? What I love about Century, sorry, I could keep going about this all day, but I love about Century is, like I said, they're very much friends and uh, interested in, like, the people who are in the bands. Um, they will ask members of bands that are on their roster, like, hey, are there any bands that we should be looking out for? Are there friends that you have that you see that are doing good work and that deserve a, 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 a shot with a major label, you know what I mean? And uh, yeah, I mean, like, I think we, I think Lorna Shore actually had a, a, some of those guys have suggested some bands that have now made it to this level. You know, they, they ask us, they, they ask the opinions of the peers around them. Like, are these people you know, worth our, our time. Should I be interested in this person? So like, they're very much, they have their ears to the ground and they care about the music and they care about what's happening actively and they can kind of see where it's going. And I think that's really cool. Not everybody is like that. A lot of people just do what they want to do because it's what they want to do, you know? Hmm. So I remember that I interviewed uh, Mark from Suicide Silence and he told me that this new generation of death bands are more well, much more closer, more more united, more gathered in between. Because all bands are are really are doing are doing like uh, two three tours. Lorna Shar with Brand of Sacrifice in, in the same tour. Well, you Sign of Swarm, this and the same tour. Key to see it, and more bands are doing this kind of tours together. That compared to yeah. the first wave, because the first wave from the special Suicide Silence, Card Effects. Um, die, die artists, die artists more than and are and, and more bands ingested and more bands are just doing tours by the, by him by themselves. No? In, in Hester doing tours by himself, suicide by himself, and with this approach that Mark told me, 
But perhaps do you think like that? This new movement are more gathered than the first wave of the death cult. See, I mean, yeah. So I mean, growing up, like I'm, I'm about thirty years old now. So like, I kind of was growing up in school listening to deathcore like the you know the older shit like job for a cowboy suicide silence white chapel uh, and i mean from my perspective i always had imagined that these bands were friends and did a lot of stuff together you know i'm like oh all these bands sound the same like i'm in a local scene i'm playing drums with a local band i'm friends with these local bands so i just assume these people were all friends growing up and you kind of come to find out over the years like it's not necessarily like that a lot of these from what I understand, it seems like a lot of these bands didn't exactly get along to start because it's more competition. And like, I mean, and now I've seen, you know, like uh, uh, Chris Garza had Whitechapel on the, his podcast and they talked about that. I thought that was really interesting to see that like they kind of butted heads back in the day, but they like wish they wouldn't have. And now they're, you know, they're, they're good friends now after all this time and stuff. And I do think it's interesting, like obviously not everybody gets along. Some people have different ideals and different ways they like to go about things and whatever. But generally speaking, I think a lot of the people that are like my age that are coming up into this, a lot of the bands we tour with, they're in their late 20s to early 30s or late 30s even. Like we grew up watching these bands and we all just wanted to do this. So any of us that are lucky, like lucky enough to do this are just grateful to be here. I mean, like myself and I know like the guys in my band, that's kind of it. It's like, we get to do this and, and meet these people and play with our heroes and friends or whatever, you know, and, and play in front of people. And like, that's all I've ever wanted from this. So generally you go into that with a good attitude. And I think people that have the same, um, like the same ideals, the same drive, like I just want to go play, make good music and go play for people and have fun. Like, I think that that makes it easier for people to get along. So then we do these tours together, like you said. And then, yeah, so I think it's a, there's a lot more common ground now. Because I think in that time when bands were coming up, it was like, I don't know, metal was a little, like we still have elitist, but it was a little more pure even back then. Like Deathcore was kind of like, whatever, you know what I mean? And uh, so it was like, well, we have our influences from this and this is what's right and this is what's right or whatever. Mm. I think now it's like we all just kind of grew up doing the same shit and everyone's just like, cool, like you're here, you're doing it. That's great. Like, let's do it together. We'll we'll have better shows, we'll mm. play to more people, make more money. We all get along, hang out. And then also you spend so much time, like you said, you spend so much time with these people on the road. You have to see them every day. Sometimes you see these people more than you see your families at home. It's like you kind of have to get along. Otherwise, you're going to be miserable. <laughs> you know? Like sometimes you kind of have to just look past certain things whatever it might may be just to enjoy yourself and enjoy each other's company because you're going to be together for so long so mm. but yeah it's, it's interesting i do think it seems very tight now you still have clicks this or that you know like i said not everybody gets along all the time mm. but generally you know it's it's a job and your friends and you go do the thing and then you go home and it's cool you know i think it's nice I, i've made more friends doing this than I ever did growing up here in my town or anything, you know what I mean? So <laughs> that is true. That is true. Yeah. 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 So Scott from uh, all other aspects that I remember I when I spoke with the Scott from Carnifex, the, the front man from that from, from them. And he told me that in a past interview that I that, that the death core scene you know, or the death core movement uh didn't have an uh uh, uh didn't have a ba um mainstream bands because they the, the mainstream bands I mean I mean, real fun. touring with Arch Enemy, touring with Behemoth, touring with Carcass, with the biggest, the biggest bands. No? So, so and they, he never, he never, he never saw bands or that, like Carnifex, like Suicide, Suicide do do tours so did tours with uh, these kind of bands. So, with this new aspect that Lorna Shore brand of sacrifice brings to the uh, a new wave to the to, to the deathcore, putting symphonic, electronic, and the gen aspects. So into the into this model, do you think that the, with this new approach that the death course in has will 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 give us uh and uh the first the first two mainstream bands because Lorna Sean are are doing in, gigs with Carcass with Behemoth. That's, that's a great 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 point to see. Yeah, no, I'm I'm very hopeful for that. I mean, obviously, like you know, those are all bands that I grew up loving and listening to. Yeah, it's definitely like a. Oh, it's the thing because I mean, if you think about it, like even even Lorna Shore ten years ago, the kind of music they were making, 
was not that far off from a band like Behemoth was 10 years ago making music. You know, like it could be kind of it's death chord versus death metal, whatever. But you can see the overlap, right? And it's like really there's no reason that they couldn't have gone on tour with that band in the past. Like they could have done it. It would have sounded good. It would have been a good tour. But I think when you get to that level, it's like, you know, obviously you have to you have to be able to sell X many tickets. You're playing in these crowds of thousands of people, you know, if you're selling like a deathcore band, it's, it's just not as, I don't want to say accessible, but it's not as like, uh, it's it's weird because metal's not really mainstream, right? But it kind of is in a way. Like a band like Behemoth or something, like, you know, somebody's somebody's Christian mom could know the band Behemoth because like maybe they hate the band. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> most people's moms aren't going to know Signs of the Swarm <laughs> or even Brand of Sacrifice or Lorna Shore, like maybe now, but you know what I mean? Like up until recently, so... I mean, it's really cool to see. Yeah, like they're out with Kojira and Mastodon. Like that, that's about I, probably as big as it gets. Like, I don't really see any band in our genre playing over Gojira or Mastodon because they're when well, they're just perfect bands, they're legacy bands. It's like it's just a different thing now. Like all those those bands of 20, 30 years ago uh came up in a time when social media wasn't as much of a thing. The the fans you make are really like grassroots fans that care have cared for 20 30 years like you have people that are anywhere from five years old to 90 years old that care you know because it's 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 spans so many generations i do feel like deathcore is a little bit more niche like i can see our statistics for our bands on like youtube and spotify it's like we have a pretty uh like our group of listeners is pretty defined from like 18 to 35 years old and it's mostly men and you know that kind of thing it's like versus those kind of bands they reach everyone across the world you know and i think bridging that gap like lorna shore is doing a great job of bridging that gap and mm -hmm. doing that kind of extreme thing of making it musical and being able to appeal to people that want to see crazy shit but also just want to like bob their heads to mastodon you know what i mean like they're not really going to see a mosh pit um, but they have music that is interesting enough that you don't have to be moshing to sit and enjoy it and play for a crowd of people. But then they can also appeal to the people that want to beat the shit out of each other. And that is a very hard line to walk and do well, you know. So I would like to see more of this. I think that they are doing a great job of kind of paving this way for a lot of other people. Um, and, you know, I mean, I've been hearing some crazy shit going on with some tours that I never, ever thought would happen or be possible. Um, you know, I mean, there's some I don't want to spill the beans, but, you know, like I've, I've been hearing about a lot more deathcore bands going on tour with legacy bands and really huge bands like uh, like Meshuggah. I, they're taking out smaller, not even smaller, but deathcore bands, that kind of thing. It's like. 10 years ago probably never would have happened you know what i mean and i think bands are like you said bridging that gap of progressive or gent yeah. or whatever you know like i don't when when we when we write music we just think like we just want to make crazy shit like we want to make crazy shit and we want it to get stuck in your head it doesn't really have to sound like this or that we try not to do too much of the black and symphonic thing but have a little bit of it for because it's fun we like it but we don't want to be like that band also, there are so many bands that do that, that do it better than us already. Like Lorna Shore, you know, I just, I don't want to be like the second best at something. I want to sound like us, you know? Mm. So, yeah, I mean, it's very special and it's like lightning in a bottle to be able to do that and also reach enough people to make those bands and their agents care, like Gojira or something, you know, like it's, it's special. I, I still, I don't think it's going to happen like overnight, like we're going to start seeing you know, uh, I don't know, any up and coming deathcore band with fucking Arch Enemy or something. But I think that it gets those people's ear to the ground and they're more willing to listen to bands like us and, and take take it into consideration. Maybe a few years ago, they'd see a, a band name like Lorna Shore and just be like, nah, I don't even want to pay attention to it because I don't care. But, you know, we're in a time now whether we'll at least listen to it and entertain it. I think that's a step, you know, if, if nothing else, it's a step. I can see it. I can see it being better in the next couple of years. So, yeah. Okay. Well, now speaking of this, of this deathcore impact uh, and war, and now with a, with a new album that you want, that you will release in a few weeks when, in a few weeks more. So what kind of expectation do you have for this new era in Sign of the Swarms? 
because you are presenting two albums in a new era of the deathcore scene, and also you are presenting this new album through the, one of the big labels that is Century Media. So what kind of expectation do you have for this? Well, I think this album will be more, will more, will get more, more attention to the media because well, a lot of things happen now with the deathcore. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely we've noticed this is our biggest release so far as far as like our uh, monthly listeners, you know, on on all of Spotify and all of the streaming platforms have doubled in the last couple months. Uh, it's definitely reaching a lot more people. Um, I, I do feel in a weird way, like music videos don't really hit the way they used to. It used to be like, I have to see this video, you know, like it obviously they still have their purpose and they're, and they're, they're good and everything. But I think music like streaming has taken such a forefront and everything where it's like, Oh, I can just click this and hear it. And I don't really need to go buy the CD and I don't really need to do this or go watch this video unless you really care about the band, you know? So it's like, how do you make people care like that? And I think we're, we've been doing a good job of that. Like we've been touring a lot. We've been meeting a lot of people. So it makes those people care a bit more. And obviously like, I love that. I love getting to meet people and stuff. So it's cool. We're building like a, we have our fans from 10 years ago, which is awesome. And we're, we're building it. It's, it's kind of cool and special to still be building like a strong, dedicated fan base of new fans at 10 years in, you know what I mean? Like, that's kind of cool. So uh, my expectations, I guess, are just bigger, better tours, you know, like obviously like you can only really do so much as far as making people listen to your music. Like, you can't really make someone care about your music. You can just present it to them and say, this is me. And if you like it, awesome. If you don't like it, cool, whatever. You listen to whatever you want. It doesn't matter. But to be able to like do that confidently and have people enjoy it is like, that's the biggest thing for me is like, we've in the last couple of years, we've really tried to just do what we want to do and make music that we want to make. Like, like I said, it doesn't have to sound like this or have to sound like that. We just, want to make heavy music that's crazy and makes people go like whoa that's cool and oh this is catchy that's stuck in my head like that's i you know we make stuff that we like and we want to hear and i think it's really special to be able to do that now after like i said almost 10 years of this band and be making new fans and reaching new people through century media and stuff so yeah i mean i look at every record we do as a fresh start like i'm obviously like we're trying to build on what we've done and like respect that legacy of the album we've had, but you know, it's, I don't really believe in doing the same thing over and over and over again. You know, I always want to do something a little different and a little exciting and something that's new to me and new to us. And so, yeah, I just, I just want to see, I want to meet more fans and I want to play more shows. And, and uh, you know, we've been pretty much around the world for the most part at this point and, I just want to keep going back and see the crowds going bigger. Um, yeah, that's that's pretty much my expectations. I'm just hoping I'm, I'm hoping I get to see more people, you know, and play more people. So okay, well, there is a detail that you said about now uh, that you said is now that's now everything is more mainstream. So, but uh, one of the things in our scene, I mean, in the metal scene in general, is that we the we prefer the physical material. It's this it's important for us. The CD, vinyl, tape, whatever the whatever the people collect, it's not a problem. It's very important for us. So, but uh, when what you uh, one one important thing is that now with this new generation, um, I mean, uh, I'm uh, talking about people of fifteen or twenty years old. This new generation are returning on time when the the people are now listening to just singles. So in a world that is prevailed with singles now. Well, what kind of what kind of what kind of motivation do you have to create an album in a world of singles? Yeah, no, that's a good point. We talked about that a lot with this record. Um, because yeah, I mean, you can be the kind of band that just puts out a bunch of great singles, like Spirit Box, like they had put out an album of singles before they dropped an album, and they're one of the biggest bands in the genre now. And that's a very interesting way to do it. It obviously works, but for me, I don't personally i don't really listen to bands like that i don't i don't find a band where it has one song that i really like i mean that that's the thing is usually when you're doing that what you're doing is putting out a bunch of you know they all have the same kind of sound but the the idea is to cover a lot of ground have really good catchy songs that cover a lot of ground so if this one didn't pick up a fan hopefully this one does and if this one didn't pick up a fan hopefully this one does and then with all those different kinds of things you can try to like 
get people to focus on the core sound of your band and maybe go back to listen to all the records or whatever. So, but for me, my favorite bands are album bands. Like I, when I, every now and then I'll just put on shuffle, but for the most part, I listen to bands that I love the album. Like if I put on a Deftones or a Gojira record or a Mastodon record or a Whitechapel or any, anything, I almost always try to listen to front to back. Or if I put on one song, I want to hear the song after it because I grew up listening to CDs. I'm sure you do have a lot of CDs. So if you're listening on shuffle, you have a great song and you know the next song that comes on has this awesome intro and you're waiting for it. And then it skips to a different song. And you're like, what the fuck? Now I have to go find that song and listen to it because it's in my head and I want to hear it. I love that. That's like the connection to music past just, oh, I like that song. That is, you're invested in the music. You're invested in the energy of the album, the emotion of the album, the feeling you get from what comes next because it's supposed to be that way. It's supposed to make you feel... If the, the one song ends slow and the next one comes in with a four count that's fast and like you're ready for that feeling it gets you you care about the band and that more than just you care about that song you know what i mean i think that is really cool so for me and the band really like i want to make an album i want to make something that all the songs are good you could just listen to a song if you want to but when you listen to it front to back it gives you that feeling so when you hear that song out of context like, man, now I want to hear the next things. I know what comes next and it's exciting and it makes it feel like a whole piece. And I, I like that a lot. It's like, like a TV show or anything like that, you know, like, or a, a, a series of a podcast. It's like, you can have these little things in context, but it's the whole story that makes it feel like worthwhile. It makes you attached to it. It makes you care about it, you know? So the, for me, I, I, I would much, I would rather make an album that, I love that feels like an album that makes you, you know, gives you a whole arc of, of uh, emotions um, and maybe not reach quite as many fans than just put out a bunch of singles that are just cool songs. Like, which, and that's cool. Like I said, I like some bands like that. I like some songs, but like you would never find me really listening to a full album of songs like that because, you know, like I, Again, I love these bands. Like I love like metalcore, like you have Spirit Box and Architects and this kind of thing. Or like Knocked Loose, and it's like, but for the most part, you go and you find that song. And a lot of those songs will kind of have the same structure. It's a lot of you know similar. And uh, I just I want I like all of our songs to be a little different. You know what I mean? Like I love I love being able to to sit and write and just do whatever we want. And you know, this song might not have the same vibe as this song. So that's not really going to be a single. It's going to be an album. It's going to give you this, a different kind of relief from the rest of the song. It's going to make you feel something different. So I like albums. I much prefer an album. I don't really ever want to be a single band that just makes, you know, a, a bunch of singles that kind of sound the same and, and that kind of thing. Like it works, but I think albums are cooler. It's just like what I grew up with, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's what we all grew up with. And, you know, like, metallica even you know like they have good songs right they like the like master puppets are uh injustice for all whatever like they have good songs but the songs for the most part don't sound the same you know what i mean like those two songs really sound the same like one might be really long and epic and have this big solo the other one might just be like a fast like three minute song it's just you know fast drums and but you listen to it together and it gives you that feeling it's what makes it special and i I, that's what the kind of shit that i want to keep in our music and i don't think a lot of people think about that in deathcore you know what i mean there's a few bands that do but i I don't think in deathcore metalcore people really think about that it's like people think more about like i need to make this banger song and i prefer to think about it like i just want to make a good song like i just want to make a song i just want to make a song i just want it to be a song i want it to be good of course but it's more important to me that it's feels like me and feels like my or feels like my band and feels like our vocalist and feels like that you know a part of us than just like this is a great song that any band could put out you know hmm. so, okay well that was a long end. but yeah. yeah i like albums <laughs> and that's, that's I like no, albums. me too me too that's why i that's why i i always buy the albums in cd in the best yeah. edition i don't like the vinyl vinyl i'm saying but it's a, it's a kind of taste it's just normal so, yeah. uh, well, you, well, you, you told me that when you prefer to album, the seat drum, and you, and you got all. Oh, I think you, you, you hear a lot of albums in, in during your teen, your teenager age, etc. No, but, yeah. uh, no, no, but um, so for you, in a world that, well, in a world that I love the singles, or you, what, what are the biggest stones for you that this album has compared to the other albums in the deathcore scene? 
a Disney one. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, compared to older albums, I feel like we we kind of try to keep some of that like unpredictableness of older albums, like older Suicide Silence or older Drop for a Cowboy or older White Chapel, where it's like things can kind of change at any time. You know what I mean? Like it could be going from this blast beat to just like big snare hit and then tempo change drums or weird shit or just drum fill or just vocals. It, it kind of like helps move the music forward. It keeps it a little unpredictable. I like that a lot. I like to try to keep that sound of like um, where things feel like they're getting like a little crazy, sometimes too crazy where you're like, what's going on? And then it kind of, you fall into like the catchy part or like something that you can bob your head to, you know, I really like that. Um, but I think the main differences are like, especially from our older records, is the vocal clarity. David has done a really great job of, well, David, Mike, uh, our bassist, and then Josh, our producer for this record, did a really great job of like finding lyrics that fit really well with the music as well as fit really well with his voice and allows him to be a little more clear and still disgusting when he wants to be, uh, but a little more relatable when he wants to be. And I think that's very new for us. We've always kind of teetered that line of like, oh, this is a catchy chorus where you can understand what's happening versus like, this is a chorus, but it's just crazy the whole time. And we just want to be a brutal band. It's like the finding that balance of shit that is crazy and needs to be and both lyrically and musically like and unlegible or you can't understand it needs to be crazy and sound like you're falling into this pit of shit <laughs> versus like uh this needs to be a more uh easily digestible part of the song you know like i, I think our songwriting just generally like has come a, a long way just paying attention to touring with bands and seeing what kind of what kinds of songs go over well with a crowd versus what songs work better on an album. Um, yeah, I just, we've, we've done a lot of growing as far as songwriting goes. I think the, like I said, the biggest difference is the, uh, the vocals. And then also like we've, we've tried to do a little bit more melody as well. Uh, not just, it, not like necessarily in vocals. I mean, there is some pitch screaming, there's some singing behind some screaming, but we really didn't do any like, just singing on this record mm -hmm. like we did on the last one a little, a little bit um but there's some things that are kind of buried in there that will grab your ear if you're really listening for it but there's never a point where it's just like singing but i think it makes for a very interesting combination of david's voice and this melody and then also a lot of times we have crazy brutal shit happening on guitars but in the background there's like pretty clean guitars that could be like 10 to 12 layers of of uh harmonies and, and just things that like really put you in a space that we would do before but it, i felt like it wasn't fully um like fully brought to life like it wasn't there were never full ideas it was like oh this is cool like we'll do that and then we move on to the next thing this was very much like but every song puts you in a space like i was saying like it's an album you know like everything kind of has this Thing. and we've never really been able to do that before we've tried like we've done albums that are pretty much just singles just heavy songs we've done albums where we tried to make it feel like an album like our like bottle deprivation we tried but it was a little bit like the songs were really split up over different people writing them so it never really felt like a whole piece i was a little bit we, we did that it definitely felt more like a record but we were a little bit more constricted on time so this yeah this was the first one that it just felt like everything is where it should be and has a place and makes you feel like it does for a reason. And uh, we put a lot of thought into that, you know, more than we usually would. Okay. So, yeah. I think, it, I think if you really are looking for something, you can find it. <laughs> okay. Like it's okay. Cool. Okay. Uh, all the detail about this, this album is that the compared to the pre compared to the previous one of the, the first four, the first four, is that the first time you are used a photo in your cover art because in, in the previous albums you did um, you amazing cover art for Sandals of Order, this program of existence cover art, etc. etc. Oh, do by someone, do some some people there in the artist there. But now this new album is like in a photo, like it frozen there, like the force and plan, etc. So what did you decide to what did you decide to change completely the cover art or the the, I think the sub completely subject of, for this new album, perhaps it's because perhaps it's yeah, so, 
Not so good. our first record, our first record since this order was pretty much just Photoshop made. Our <laughs> sec, our, our second and third records were uh, were actually like paintings or digital paintings. I, I believe the third record was an actual painting that then got uh, uh, scanned. The second record was a, a digital painting by uh, per, uh, Par uh, Olsen, I believe. He does a lot of famous uh, metal records. But our last record, we went full digital. Like we just went like crazy off the end because we were like, we've done all these kind of things. A lot of people, a lot of bands do that same kind of thing. And we were like, we just want it to be different. So when you look at it, it's like, you know, you'll see spreads of album covers. Like I'm listening to this or like, oh, all this music is coming out. You see that and it's like, it doesn't look like anything else. You know, it looks like it's different. Whether it's better or not, it's just different. So I think that that helps to grab your attention, whether it's good or bad. And then with this record, yeah, we kind of did the same thing. It was, it's digital, but it, yeah, it looks a little bit more photorealistic. Like it's, if you zoom in, it's a, a bunch of towers of bodies, it's pillars of bodies. So we got that idea from our song Tower of Torsos. Uh, so like, it'd be really cool if it was this huge landscape of pillars and very regal. And uh, it's so yeah, I mean, the, 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 the title just kind of ties into that. Like, I'm the lone empty. We were like, you can go a couple different ways with it. You can think of it as like, I'm above the lone empty or I'm like, or I am with like low and empty, you know what I mean? And it's just, if you look at that cover, it just kind of gets darker and darker into this pit, you know, it's just, it, I just thought it was really cool. I thought it kind of gives you this feeling of like low and empty. Like, it feels like you're being sucked into this tower of dead bodies, you know? And, uh, it just feels dark and like it kind of pulls you in, you know? And like it makes you want to look closer. I think that's really cool. But yeah, we just want something. We're always trying to, like I said, we're always trying to do something a little different. Like whether it's better or not, we like just different, you know. And uh, we've never really done anything with the white and blue and just the sound of the music. And we kind of kept coming back to this like low and empty thing is like, you know, it's something that just feels dark and sucks you in and makes you like want to know more. And it feels evil but exciting and interesting and you know it kind of pulls you in like you know you grow up like i grew up listening to records like slayer or whatever you know anything it's like it just feels like it, it pulls you in right it makes you interested you're like what the fuck is that like i want to look i want to look closer i want to look inside so yeah that, that was kind of the thought behind that it was just we wanted to bring in ideas from the music, from the songs, like the low and empty thing, the Tower of Torsos. We thought that that would look really cool that way, and it does. And if you get to actually see the inside of the album, there's all kinds of really close-up shots of them mm -hmm. uh, where you can see all the individual limbs and whatnot, which is cool. Um, yeah, it's just different. We wanted to try something different. We're always trying to do something new, you know? Okay. Okay. Oh, well, well, I think you want I want I. I think it was a photo, but you told me that's not <laughs> interesting. No, yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's all uh, digitally, digitally no, created. Okay, okay, we lost that one. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, no, it's cool. It's a fine line, right? Like, it looks like it could be a photo. Yes, yeah, I, I think it's really cool. You know. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we are very close to this interview, Bobby. For this aspect, what kind of plans do you have for this new album? Perhaps you will embark on a new tours, gigs, or perhaps you will embark for the first time in a Latin American tour. Yeah, so we we are always trying to tour. We love touring, so we're doing a uh, album release shows here in the states. Uh, we're just doing about a week and a half of those before we go to Europe here uh, in about a month, and then we're doing some festivals over there for the first time, which I'm super excited and grateful for. We'll be doing some headlining and co-headlining shows in between those festivals in Europe, mainland, and also the UK. We headline in the UK for the first time, which is super exciting. Um, we have some things we're working on that are not announced yet for the US. We'll be coming back probably later this year doing a full US tour. Um, for early next year, we're looking to go back to Europe, hopefully. And then, yeah, I think we are trying our best to plan a full, proper headline tour here in the States for next year. So. That's what we're hoping for. I can't promise anything, but we're doing our best to work it out. It's there's so many tours happening, so much good stuff going on. It's you know we're working around a lot, but yeah, we're we're actually hoping to come to Latin America as well. We just went to Mexico for the first time, and we met some really great people that uh, said they'd like to get us get us down uh, to to South America, Latin America. So fingers crossed. Hopefully, we can make that happen. 
you're talking about like Colombia and uh, Chile and maybe Brazil. I'm not totally sure. They said they said a bunch of names to me, and I was just like, cool. Like <laughs> if we can make it happen, I want to go. I want to go everywhere. So yeah, we're we're trying our best to stay busy always. Okay. Well, Bobby, the sad times arrive at this interview. I hope you enjoyed this one. Like me, you terrific guy. Love the, the last record. Congratulations on this new one. And um, perhaps we want to add something to your Latin American fans and Metaleno followers. Yes. Well, first of all, thank you so much for tuning in. It means the world to me that anybody would care and listen to me talk about my band and my friend Javier here. So thank you. Uh, yeah, like I said, hopefully we will be planning to come back uh, to come down your way. Uh, in 2024 uh, we're doing our best to work all that out uh, we have everything we're doing shows merch uh, album uh, our album comes out on july 28th it's just a little over three weeks away maybe less by the time this comes out uh, everything is signs of the storm.com signs of the storm.com bio you can look up album name photos anything anything you need or want to see it is right there so thank you yeah.